So assisting a client with a bedpan, the bedpan should be in their room, but you wanna make sure it's there. So I'll knock on the door, wash my hands. Hi Annie, I'm Myra, I'm here to help you with the bedpan. I'm gonna provide for privacy. Put on my gloves. And typically the bedpan is kept in a plastic bag in the nightstand. We have both types here. So a fracture pan um, is typically for people who have had a hip fracture or a leg fracture. It's a little bit smaller than a standard bedpan. With either bedpan, the lower end or the part that's not as wide is going to go underneath. With the fracture pan, it's easy to remember because the handle is here, and so you'd put that under the resident that way and take it out. The normal bedpan looks like a toilet seat, and so you'll just place them on uh, like you would a normal toilet seat. So for the video, we'll use the fracture pan. All right, Annie, I'm gonna have you lift up your hips, and I'll place the pan underneath you. So I would have her raise her bottom up and put this underneath. If your resident doesn't have that mobility, you'll have to help them turn. So I'm going to leave the bedpan at the foot of the bed, which is considered dirty. I'm going to put this side rail up and go to the other side of the bed. And then I'm going to use the lift sheet to roll her on her side and get the bedpan underneath her. So I'm going to make sure her arm is out. Okay, Annie, I'm going to have you roll to your right on one, two, three. So we'll have her roll that way. And then I'll take the bedpan and kind of position it underneath her bottom so that when she rolls back, she's right on top of the bedpan. And then I would look from the front and make sure she's positioned well there and that it's not bothering her. Okay, and since I've touched the bedpan, I'm going to take my gloves off, sanitize my hands. And then we want this to be as much like using a toilet as possible. So we're going to raise her head so she's in a little better position to go to the bathroom. Is that comfortable? Okay, I'm going to put the bed back down and then I'm going to leave you with some toilet paper. I see you have your call light there. So then I would leave the room and allow the resident to use the bedpan. When they're finished, they would put the call light on. I would come back in the room, wash my hands again. Get my gloves on. I'm going to put, her, I'm going to put your head down first. gloves on and get the bedpan from this side. So she used the toilet paper herself. If your resident wasn't independent, um, you could use disposable wipes and do front peri care and then carefully have her roll to the side. And then you need to make sure that you hold the bedpan at the same time so we don't spill the contents. If you are by yourself, you should take this to the bathroom, dump the contents and rinse it out and then put it back in the bag. Change your gloves and then you could come and help with backside peri care if they weren't able to do that on their own. If the person is on INO, then you could pour that into a graduate and then you're going to put the graduate on a level surface and measure the amount of urine and then dump the graduate in the toilet and then you're going to rinse both the bedpan and the graduate. Okay, so when I come back from the bathroom, put this back in a storage bag, take my gloves off, sanitize my hands, and I'll get the side rail back down. Okay. Are you comfortable, Annie? Here's your call light. 
Bed's all the way lowered and locked. I'll open up that curtain again. And then I would document the output and report anything to the nurse as needed.